going to continue our study in the study of evil. Just writing down what today's date is. We're in the 13th video. We're picking up where we were last time with evil, criminal, and capital punishment. We're doing it a little bit earlier today. It's, uh, I might have activities that I can't get out of this afternoon. So we're going to look at it right now in criminal and capital punishment. You're going to have to get the 12 other videos or audio files. You have to listen to this entirely. This is one of the mess messages you can't. Well, I'll just get tape number one. I'll get tape number seven. You got to listen to it all. And with criminal and capital punishment, if my throat or my voice, something like that, I apologize. It's bad allergy day. Criminal acts that violate the laws of God and man. Penalties are affected by unlawful acts of doing evil. So, Apologize. Must be my gray hair. So, we looked at five things last week. And we're going to pick up the six. And hopefully we'll be able to get to a new topic of good is evil and evil is good. But our first place for today is Judges 20 verse 13. Now therefore deliver us, the men, the children of Belial, wicked people, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voices of their brethren, the children of Israel. Now what's going on? Well, in chapter 19, a Levite has gone out to his father-in-law to get his, his bride that ran away. And he stays there for a while and he has a good time. And then he finally ups and leaves and he's heading to, to give offerings to the Lord God. And he comes to a place in Gibna that it's nighttime falls and he's going to lodge within the streets. And an old man comes home from work and he takes the Levite and his servant and his wife into the house. Hospitality. Where the where you know hotels, hospital come from. So while they're in the old man's house, we come across verse 22, something we see with the story of Lot, but verse 22 with Judges 19. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, and we read that in 20, verse 13, beset the house roundabout and beat at the door. And spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man, the guest, that we came, that came into thy house, that we may know him. And this happened in Genesis 19, verse 5. With Lot, there's sodomite, sexual pervert. And we're not going to read the rest of the story, but he takes his concubine. Verse 24 will be, Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, the old man, exactly in uh, Genesis 19, and his concubine. Then will I bring out now, and humble ye now, and do with them that seemeth good unto you. But unto the man do not so vile a thing. It's out of me. But the men would not hearken unto him, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, sexual relations, and abused her. That's the only place in the Bible that word abuse shows up. All the night until the morning, when day began to spring, they let her go. And then they find her at the doorstep, and he takes her, and she dies. So we come across now, chapter 20, verse 13. Now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, the sodomites, the sexual perverts, which are in Gibna, where the city where he was at, that we may put them to death and put evil, put evil away from Israel. This was the law. Now, Judges is, is a book of, you know, just 
the vile wickedness of man. And yet, they have enough wisdom to say, God doesn't approve of this. So, what we have here is, is the charge, the criminal act of sexual battery, rape, and abuse. And the children of Israel, even when they're not doing right, and they're in a time, we're doing right, we're doing wrong. We're doing right, we're doing wrong. We're doing right, we're doing wrong. And the act of doing wrong, sexual battery, rape, and abuse. The 11 tribes of Israel came forth and, hey, bring those people out. We got to get rid of that evil, the sin. We're going to put them to death. Say what you will about other religions and countries. Oh, they, they stoned the people to death. They, they chopped off their hand. They, you know. It's a Bible fact that sexual abuse and rape, you don't put them in hotel prison for the rest of their life. You have got to apply the powers that be, Romans 13. And you've got to remove them. That's Bible. And it's just a sad story. But look at the sexual perversion we got in this country now. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. You know, if we got rid of the sexual perverts in the, in the in the pornography business of all ages, people would be restricted to what they do. I would hope. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. What we got here? We have a judicial system of any error or any period or any country. When it fails or it does not, speedily execution of the guilty. And the penalties of the state, where criminals will continue to be unlawfully practiced and increase the sin to worse they can be. When any nation allows criminals to be free to continue their criminal behavior or even educate them greater and wild form of criminal act, this is the failure of the correctional system, and that is evil. That's anywhere. Oh, he's always picking on America. Well, America is a... As I told you, when I, where I come from in Connecticut, there was a woman who... Many bank robberies. And then finally she was caught. I mean, she put them on a trail. Where is she? How is she? And when they finally got to, to, to speaking to her, they found out, you know, why? How did you go so long? How did you elude us? And come to find out this woman, this bank robber, was, was already in prison for bank robbery. And she said, well, when I went into prison, I learned how to do it and how not to get caught. I had to, I had to speak with people who have done it. I have thought and, and weighed out all the complications. Prison gave me time and gave me the knowledge to come this far that I've come. And I bet if you were to let her out again, I bet you she'd go even further. And why do people carjack? Because in the prison system, it's fun. They go into prison, well, you know, I committed this many crimes. I've done this many crimes. It's a badge of armor, honor. The criminal acts that they do. There are men and women in prisons today 
that have tattooed marks of their victims. And they will gladly show you that this amount of tears that I have tattooed on me is for every one of my victims. That ought not to be so. Anywhere. And this verse in Ecclesiastes, an Old Testament archaic book, why is criminal act, why is it rampage? Why do they come out of jail and they do it more? Because they know your, your criminal justice system is a joke. And what's the worst you're going to do to them? You're going to provide free room and board with medical and security and TV and exercise and sports program. Friend, that's not the way of the criminal justice system God designed. If a man in the Old Testament, under the law, if he stole something, he became to the servant of the person he stole for until he paid back everything. If a man was guilty of a criminal offense that would take his life, his life would have been taken or should have been taken. Jesus Christ, innocent. Declared innocent by the Roman government of Herod and Pilate. And yet the Jewish people wanted the guilty party of Barabbas to be set free and to crucify the innocent, sinless son of God. That ought not to be so. There is more crimes today of harming a pet than there is for killing a baby in the womb. People are more anxious to save the whales than come to Jesus Christ to save their souls. That ought not be so. Luke 23, 22. Here, you can relax. We're coming to the end of criminal and capital and punishment. Luke 23, 22. I know it's shaky ground. Well, I did the prison ministry a couple of times. I almost started a, uh, a riot was because I preached about capital punishment. I want me to tell you something, too. Majority of the people that, that were under me, I can't speak for the whole prison, but majority of the people that were under me when I taught were all in favor of what I preached. Now, maybe they weren't up for capital punishment, but I, I'm telling you right now, I've been in four jails, and I've sat down. And I've talked. I ain't going to give you no other. I, I sat down and I talked with murderers. And I told them. When we talked, I said, listen, you know, you're not supposed to be living. I said, I would think that if you'd been declared twice by a judge and or jury. That you're guilty of murder. The biblical act says you're, you're not to be living. And some of the murderers I knew, I mean, they professed. And I talked to, to, to the CO, and yeah, it's. And some of them said, yeah, you're right. So we could vile people that think, oh, we ought not be doing that. So when a justice system fails, Allowing criminals to continue and to wax worse, they're going to continue more and wax worser, if that's a word. And you're going to sit back and say, well, what's the problem?
What's the problem? We're not going to go to the Bible for the problem. We're going to go to educate people who don't know what crimes are and don't know. But when you have to make them make restitution, when you make them pay back every value plus a fine, the Bible imposes 20%. Well, I ain't got the money. That's why I have to steal. Well, now you become a servant to that person. That may deter stealing. And, and listen, I understand that in hard times, no jobs and all that. Is there a right or wrong? We're talking about the criminal justice system in Ecclesiastes. When they don't do what they're supposed to do, they make it worse. When you do not chastise your child and you don't ever chastise your child, that child is going to get worse and worse and worse. Luke 23, 22. And he said unto him the third time, why, what evil has he done? Talking about Jesus. I have found no cause of death in him. I'm having a hard time reading with all the notes I do in my Bible. I have found no cause in death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. <laughs> well, question, Pilate, why are you going to beat him if he's innocent? To appease the people. So here are the charges against Jesus. And he, they said, what crimes, what evil, evil crimes. Pilate, a, a Roman citizen, a Roman figure in charge of the government, calls the crimes against the state evil. When are you going to hear the word evil of the courtroom of your modern times today? You won't. What we're looking at here is the innocent Jesus Christ, but we're not looking at Jesus right now. Pilate said, what evil? All right, will the, will the, uh, will the defendant stand before the courtroom? Will you read off the evil that this man is charged with? No, sir, excuse me, charges. The Bible says the evil. He shoplifted. That's evil. He got drunk in disorderly conduct. That's evil. He's killed somebody. That's evil. He's stolen. That's evil. Assault. That's evil. Not what are the criminal charges. What are the evil charges? What are the charges of the criminal acts? That is what's evil when we talk about criminal actions and capital punishment as we close in this. Got that one done. And we can done more. But I know that's a that's a topic most undiscussed and unworthy of people because they don't want to talk about that. All right, so let's look at good is evil and evil is good. And see how many we do so far. That's one, two, three. All right, I'll pick up two in this one. When sanity has reached a breaking point and men and women are taught and preached, preached out of pulpit or podium, and instructed by other men and women that God said it is evil and what God says is good. The word of God. God declares through the Bible what is evil and what is good. What is good is what the Bible says. How can you say it's evil? Because God says it's evil. Is adhered as wrong and old and of no value. When 
a person is charged with an affair instead of adultery or fornication, it's allowable. When a marriage party gets the rough end of the stick and the law by their partner committing adultery against them, and the adulterer walks out of the courtroom with the good, and the violated party walks out with the bad. When the medical field has been given the excuse to sin and medication is supplied to right the wrong. We got illegal drug pushers. We got illeg illegal drug activity. So what are we going to do to, to, to handle this illegal drug? We're going to give them free syringes and alcohol pads. But to the diabetic, he's got to pay for his needles and his alcohol swabs. When the media covers sin with vain, pretend words of innocence and downplay the severity of the actual sin, they're up on the movie screen acting. Though they're framing, that's the Bible word. When you got a Sunday school classroom and little juniors playing Moses, that's not Moses, that's feigning. That's pretend. That's a lie. Didn't our little girl just play Mary so well? She played a liar. How dare the preacher get up in the, in the pulpit? Oh, all the all the actors and actresses, the harlots, the harlots, and the, the adulterers and the fornicators that are on the screens and television. And we had little Mary here play. We had little Susie play Mary for us in our Christmas pageant. Well, Susie's not Mary. Little Johnny is not Moses. The Christmas pageant, the Christmas Christian play is just as much as a sin as the television and the movies. But we put a Christ sticker on it. We put a Christian label on it and God will allow it. Fooey garbage junk. If it's not all right for the Hollywood, it's not all right for the church. I was in a church one time, and the, and the youth group got up there, uh, uh, the red solo cups, pretending they were drinking and having, having party and, and uh, get, acting like they were drunk. It's okay because it's the children Christian youth group. It's abstained from all appearance of evil. And if Joab's brother was accused of murder for thinking about killing this man and charged with murder, <coughs> so is your Sunday school or your class going to be charged with drinking alcohol by pretending? If a man thinks upon a woman to, cause, to, to, to commit adultery with her in his heart, well, so is your children pretending to sin, but it's on an altar stage of a Christian performance. Oh, so it's evil for Hollywood, but it's good for the church. Wow. Can I say how many we're going to do? One, two, three, four, five. All right, we'll try to get to as many more. Uh, I, I, some people just got upset. We'll leave my church alone. We're calling evil good and good evil. We're going to go to Saul, uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel 25. It's not okay for the alcoholic to drink. But I'm a Christian. I have a little wine. No, it's both evil. 
Well, doesn't uh, the Bible say, you know, Timothy, get, take a little wine for your, for your stomach's infirmity. It doesn't take a little wine to drink and have a leisure time. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? We are in a state of a world today, worldwide. Good is evil and evil is good. I have had times, I'm a street preacher in Daytona Beach, Florida. You know how much evil goes on in Daytona Beach, Florida? We have spring breakers come and you see women's part of the body you shouldn't see. We have bike week twice a year and we see women parts that we ought not to see. We have the Daytona 500. They're, they're, they're fairly dressed and all that. But it, all these seasons, they're, they're surrounded in alcohol and alcoholism. It fills our hospitals. It fills our prisons. I've been in the hospital during these times. I've been in the prison ministry during these times. But what happens? A man at a farmer's market on a little island in Daytona Beach gets more police action because he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then you see police action. Listen, I have sat in the middle of Main Street, Daytona Beach, Florida, with the motorcycles and the parades and the people going up and down and seen less police action than I've seen at the farmer's market where I've had the cops stationed there for the full time that I've preached throughout the history. You see, I'm evil and wicked because I preach the gospel. But they are okay because they buy the booze which pays for the taxes and promotes businessism and tourism. My preaching does not put you in a hospital. My preaching does not put you in jail unless you're going to attack me. Then you'll go to jail. We are in a realm of today in the public school system and now in the churches they are teaching the evilness and they're not teaching the good. It's okay to have prayer mats facing towards Mecca in California public schools but it's not okay to bring a Bible to the schools. What's wrong? It's not okay to bring a Bible in the schools but until recently, it's okay to bring a Bible into the prison and give them up free, which they're stopping that. Or I heard they're trying to put a stop to that in Florida. Marijuana was illegal. Now it's illegal. Now it's illegal. I don't know. Marijuana was illegal. Now it's legal. Then what did you spend all the money for D.A.R.E. for? Why did you waste our tax money on dare when now you're legalizing it because next you're going to legalize the next drug how dare you teach it's okay that we came from monkeys but you don't teach the creation of god the father you're teaching evil that is good evolution we come, you know we come from darwinism oh you can't bring god into the schools well guess what god has shut your schools he has taken everybody out of your schools because you don't want them in the schools and now I see on Facebook all the parents complaining because they got to take care of their own little brats. Why should my tax dollars pay for you? I've homeschooled both my children from the, they've never set a foot in the public school system. I have taught them right and wrong. I have taught them evil and good. Yes. I taught them that creation is good. And yes, I taught my children evolution it was wrong. How dare they teach children? Here's a condom. When the Bible says you abstain until you get married. But here's a condom. That's good. Not in the Bible, it's not. Oh, did he get you pregnant? We won't tell you, parents. We'll go get you abortion. That's wrong. Bible's for life. But for living what the Bible says, that's that's evil, according to the today's standards i said you got to get all these things together all these messages you can't just pick up oh look he's talking about abortion this one you got to get them all now we come to a good subject here good is evil and evil's good and we've got what i got 10 topics on this one 
Then next we go good versus evil. So 1 Samuel 25, 21, we have, Now David had said, Surely in vain, emptiness means nothing, have I kept all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertains unto him, and he has requited, repaid, given me a payment, me evil for good. Now what's going on here? Nabal has shepherds and sheep. And they're out in the fields like they are. You know, they're grazing a lot. And David and his men, his, his military men, they're in the same area. And David's men are, are talking with the shepherds. And, you know, David's probably re remembering the days when he was a little shepherd boy and all that. And they're talking. And there have probably been threats. Or David's men has protected. Nabal's men. David has provided a service for Nabal's men and sheep. Protection. And David calls upon Nabal and says, listen, give us a little food, give us a little drink, help us. I mean, we have done you a service. And Nabal wickedly says, no, who do you think you are? I don't know who David is. And the good is evil and the evil is bad today is not paying for services rendered. What can this be? Well, I have a pet peeve. Let me tell you what my pet peeve is. And if it's right or wrong, God will judge it. You go in one day and you get yourself a Coca-Cola and you, you got two or three lines. And this, this is true. This is what happened. And you go in there, and you got two or three lines, two or three cashiers. You get the shortest line possible. Boom. You get your cashier, and you, you pay for your Coca-Cola, you go out. You go back two weeks later. There are three lines. One cashier doing all three registers. She's only getting paid for one. You were paying for three. I believe that service is not rendered properly to her. If she's doing the work of three, you better pay her for three. When you got somebody cashiers and janitors and cooks on the grill and then goes does this and does, uh, how many jobs is that person doing? Not that maybe a pet three, but if you were to hire an individual to do each of those jobs of that one person, you would have three to four positions. That may be a pet peeve, and you can take that and throw it in the garbage, but all right, let's look at some other non-payment for services rendered. You go to a good restaurant. Now, I go to a lot of buffet. I don't do this at buffet. But when you go to a restaurant, and they come up and say, sir, what would you have? I like to have a Coca-Cola, a hamburger, extra pickles, and fries. Can I get the onion rings, too, with that? And everybody orders. They bring you an ice cold soda, first of all. And then, they, you know, do you want the onion rings with the meal or before? No, I like to have with the meal. And they do everything. They come up and say, how's your meal? Everything fine? Good. You know, let me get you some more Coca-Cola. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anything else I can get for you? Can I get you dessert? Well, no, we're all, that made us full. Thank you. You like more nap? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll take some more nap. And then you don't give them a tip. You're getting services rendered that you did not tip them. Listen, I, sometimes those tips are the primary part of their job. I'll tell you where else you would go with not rendering service. All right, give them a tip. Give them a good tip and put the tip money inside of a gospel tract. How's that? Barbers, hairdressers, don't they get a tip? Have you ever at any time in your life received a service and didn't get paid, didn't pay for it? How about a compliment? Thank you for your job. How about a military figure? You see them in uniform and you walk right by them. Excuse, I'd like to thank you guys for being in the service. Thank you for your duty for protecting us. You don't have to give them money, but it should not be a render to say, hey, thank you for being in uniform. Man, you went through hard basic training. 
I wouldn't want to wear that uniform this hot, sticky day. So in evil, David says, I done good, but I got evil. Has you ever got good and you gave someone evil? I think we all done that. I don't think we gave them full value. Been a couple times, you know, I go, when I was a little boy, I'd go mow lawns, shovel sidewalk. There was a couple times that I walked up and said, okay, I've done the job, and they didn't pay me. You didn't do a good enough job, or, you know, or just a couple times, outright just, ah, thank you very much, slam the door, and don't answer the door. How about loans, mortgages? How about the word bankruptcy? you gotten something, oh, I'll write it off. And then someone else gets shortchanged. That ought not to be so. So, oh yeah, uh, uh, we can't have creation in school, but we can have evolution. Yeah, 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 see, that, that, that's an evil that we shouldn't have. And, and not rendering somebody full value of their services is also a good that is evil and evil that is good. That's not happening with many of our commercial businesses today, employer-employee relationship. Now, let's look at the employee-employer. You get a 40-hour paycheck at the end of the week. Did you put the 40 hours in? You put a full 40 hours in. Christian, do you realize what you shortchange your employer is going to end up in the judgment seat of Christ as much as the employer has shortened the employee both will end up at the judgment seat of Christ wood paper I mean yeah wood hay or stubble you thought this study was going to be all about the evil wicked people it's about Christians too I stand guilty not giving the full hours what I what I got paid for We'll move on to something else. First Kings 22a. We'll move on. First Kings 22a. Maybe we'll go back to crime and uh, capital punishment. First Kings 22a. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, this is a wonderful, great story. The son of Imola, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. That's a strong word. For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Oh, you know, I love my preacher. Because he preaches fairy tales and flowers, and we have egg hunt on Easter, and we have Santa Claus come to all the little children in church, and God just loves us. We're just so happy. I walk out of church with a big old smile that I had, and he's just so, he's so great. He doesn't call me a sinner. He says, you know, I got faults, I got problems, I got errors, and it's okay, because we're all, we're not all perfect. <laughs> that panty waist is calling. What's he calling it? He's calling evil is good and good is evil. You get a preacher, get up there and say, let me tell you right now, except you repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Jesus Christ is the only way. Your church can't save you. Your baptism can't save you. You're not good enough when the Bible says there is none that do as good. No, not one. Oh, he's making me afraid. He's such an evil, bad preacher. I hate him. That's how I preach at the farmer's market. Call the police, 911. There's a guy down here yelling. That's not what Jesus would do. That's exactly what Jesus did. And when they say that's not what Jesus does, you're calling Jesus evil good and good is evil. When you love the lies from the pulpit and you hate 
the, the, the goodness from the pulpit. Sugar is evil. Salt is good. Let me tell you. When I, I, I get rashes and I, I, I soak and I have problems with my, with my muscles and I, and I soak in Epsom salt. Oh, not the stuff I got the other day. But <laughs> Jeremy, my foot today, I got a problem with my foot. I put it in Epsom salt. It's supposed to make it feel better. Oh. I eat too much sugar. I'm a diabetic. I have problems. So when God speaks against our sin, and our sinful desire. And you don't want to hear it. How about this one? God speaking. Well, I got my... And I, I, this is one person too. Well, I just like this woman. She's on television. And she's a televangelist. And what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? It says a woman should not accept the authority over a man. Well, I like her because she's good. I don't care if she's good. She's not supposed to be doing it. You are calling evil good and good evil. It is good that a preacher burns your hide. I thank God I sit under a preacher and I'm, I'm sitting in that pew and I'm listening to him and I, I'm bowing my head. Lord God, I'm a sinner. <laughs> Forgive me. And then I get mad. Oh, Lord, yeah, I do that. Thank you, Lord. You need a little vote. This man hated. He hated the good preacher. And they will say, you're not supposed to hate God's love. Well, you evil, calling good and good evil. How dare you? How dare you call me unlovable when you hate me preaching the gospel? How dare you? That's called hypocrite. I let my light shine. You turn people away. Well, I'm sorry. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says many will go the broad way. Few will find a straight gate. We've got more good versus evil and good is evil in all the most of the pulpits in the world. And they glorify sin. That ought not to be so. Like I said, mentioned before, when you got these performances going on in the church in the name of the Sunday school class, in the name of the youth group. And, you know, it's so cute that that little Sarah plays Mary. Sarah's not Mary. Eric is not Moses. But, oh, the people on the screen, the people in the movies, how dare they? It's the same thing. Why is your performance in your church? More different than the performances on the screen. Why? Don't you know it's a sin? Don't you know King Saul <coughs> dressed up like Halloween and went out looking for a trick and a treat? Don't you know that that king's wife went to the prophet dressed up to be somebody else to find out about her child is going to die? Why is it wrong for Hollywood to dress up, but in the in the schools? I mean, in the, in the churches, in the Sunday school, and in the youth group, they do a performance, and it's okay. That's good is evil, and evil is good. Why is it that we can decorate our churches for, for uh, what do they call it again? My brain just went out the window. Oh, what do these churches have these days now? Um, man, my brain just froze on me. Vacation Bible. We're, we're a God, King James, Center Church. We're going to do right. All right, let's have games. Let's have five minutes of Bible. And then we'll have 20 minutes of slide. And then we'll have arts and crafts for 20 minutes. And then we'll have this for 20 minutes. And then we'll have a kumbaya kind of fun. And then we're just going to have fun and give out games, games and prizes. Isn't that what a carnival does? Why can't the carnival do it, but your church can do it? That's called good is evil. Evil is good. I hate the movies on the television. I hate that. But we're allowed to do it in the church house. When you got a preacher that God has called and preaches from a King James Bible, that is not evil. 
That is good. Romans chapter 10 says, God, I, God says, I love them feet that carry the glad tidings. That other mess ugh, makes me throw up. Revelation chapter 3, if you want the verse. The Laodicean church age, God says, it pretends. It pretends. Oh, we're rich. We're great. We're wonderful. Well, we're the, uh, look how great. Look how many people came out to church. Look how big our Sunday school is. Look how wonderful our preacher is. Look how many cassette tapes he had. Oh, you miserable, poor, naked, blind, dumb. You make me sick of the words of God. But you got a street preacher on the street. Oh, that's bad. That's wrong. They tear them up. Call the cops. Get them out of here. That's evil is good and good is evil. The FDA and the other government organizations. Let's just fill our food with junk. It's good for you. Why have we got so many cancers? Listen, when I grew up as a little boy, uncle has cancer. Uncle smokes. <laughs> oh, that's why he's got cancer. When I grew up, you had an ailment because you smoked the cigars or a cigarette, or you had an ailment because because you, you drank that that stuff that, that alcohol. Now today we got this artificial food and and preservatives and all that, and we're all sick. That's good as evil, and evil's good. If the government let's put it this way, if the government approves of it. You already okay. Something wrong with it. Something wrong with it. First Kings twenty two eighteen. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? Micaiah's prophecy was one hundred percent correct. Now let me tell you something. When I tell you you're going to hell if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can think I'm evil and you can think whatever you do, whatever you believe is good. But you're going to end up in hell. When I tell you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, that is good for you. That is not evil. When your preacher gets up and tells your sin and tells you you need to stop it, you need to repent, you need to get right with God, you need to fight it. That's good. It may save your marriage. It may save your health. It may save your church. The guy that gets, or the woman, especially wrong, but they get up and, and give you a little lecture and, you know, nonsense. That's evil. Now, I'm not saying, you know, listen, I, I've walked out of church. I've been happy. Glory to God. The hymns were great. The message was great. But if you get 52 sermons like that every year, there's something wrong. You ought to get mad at your pastor at least once, you know, during a year. At once of the 52 message, should be a message, I remember that guy. That's good. That means that pastor's been praying. That pastor's being used by God. So, Again, this guy is evil because he preaches against me. And then when he tells the truth, I don't like what he said. I'll go find another church. Now, let me tell you, I I've been in many churches, okay? I have left many churches. I was I'll tell, and this is no particular order, but I'll tell you why I left those churches. One church, I was actively going to school, institute, to become the doctor that I am in theology. And I was thinking about 
start in a home church, start in a work where we live, in the city we live. The pastor got wind of it and de-churched us because we were going to take his flock. We're, we were overriding his authority. So we were asked to leave. We left. Another church, we left because one of the, one of the things was I, I was going to get married. And the pastor called into his office and he said, I'm not going to marry you two. Why? We've done some sin. We've been because you won't come to fellowship Sunday nights. And this church would there would be no Sunday evening service if they had a fellowship. Nonsense. And there were more people who came to the fellowship than interest. So, and then I got called to the ministry, and I, I wasn't called by him. So that plain and simple. Another church asked us to leave because I did not like to decorate. The whole entire church was decorated inside and out for uh, vacation Bible. We walked away, called us on the phone. We'll see you next week when all that junk is cleared up. No, you go find a church with light faith. Okay, bye. Mother church found out that uh, accused me of, of, of adultery. Because a woman I was interested in had, had a divorce. Scriptural down divorce. According to the words of Jesus, that divorce was righteous. Not in his eyes. Um, I had a church leave. I had to leave because I had a problem with my stomach at that time. I had to frequently use the bathroom. I'm sorry if I'm being cruel. And when you walked out of the, the, the foyer or the, the assembly room, whatever you want to call it, and you had to go use the bathroom, you were not allowed back in there because you would disrupt the preacher's message. I was having a medical problem. I could not go back then. So, another church we left, 45 minutes of loud music being played that blasted your ears, and five minutes with, <coughs> with open, <coughs> excuse me, my throat, <coughs> okay, open your Bible, <coughs> and get a five or ten minute message. See you later, Charlie. We had a church ask us to leave, because we went on a Sunday morning. Instead of going to church, we went to Daytona 500. We went on International Boulevard. We did not go into 500 itself. And we had the nerve to preach and pass out tons of gospel tracts. The people crossing the street to get to Daytona 500, where tons of gospel tracts got out. And we left his pathetic little service, and he asked us to leave. Now, what do you think of those reasons? I had never left the church because the past, I, I did not like the message, the message again. I had a church one time, we were in it, and when he said, open up your Bibles, open the Bibles, it was not King James. Man, I, I, I slammed that Bible so hard, my wife told me, she may have been my fiance. It was, she was my wife and fiance. She said, you slammed that, that Bible so hard of yours that everybody heard and everybody looked to it. Well, good. And if there wasn't anybody sitting in our row, I would have gone right on out. That person wouldn't move, so we couldn't leave. I have never left the church because of the message. I left another church because the pastor took me in. He liked me and, and all that. And his favorite family came back from somewhere. And they were coming to, and we're all going to vote for them to be members. I had no idea what this was. I had no idea what voting was. So everybody who, who likes his family or wants his family to church raised their hand. I raised my hand. He goes, you're not a member of this church. Put your hand down. And we left because I had no understanding what had happened. Wait a minute. This guy was liking me. This guy, you know, I was doing things in the church. And I thought he told me to leave. I thought, hey, you know, if I'm not a member of this church, we didn't go back. But there are people who leave a church. Because, I don't like that message. How dare he tell me we got to skip our child's 
ball play on Wednesday or her ballerina lesson on Wednesday to come to church in the middle of the week. How dare he? We'll go find a church that will custom to. That's wrong. When you leave a church because the message you hate and it's God speaking, you're calling good is evil and evil is good. Now, with the realm right now, we're running out of time. But let me say one last thing. If your church opens up pretty soon from this coronavirus, if your church doors open up and you stay home with live stream and there's nothing wrong with you, I mean, we've been giving the okay, coronavirus is good. It could be there, but there's no more war. No more six feet, no more, you know, all this not clear. Okay, go back to your lives. All right? All clear. Let me get that straight. All clear. And your church doors are open up, and you can sit next to your friends, and you can shake hands, and you can sneeze, you can cough without anybody having a heart attack. And if you're not sick yourself and you are still live streaming with the church doors open up and you go around shaking hands and you can and talk to people, you can get into groups and, uh, and you're still live streaming, not in church. That's evil is good and good is evil. One last more. This is it. And we'll close. Lord willing, next Thursday will be afternoon. Like I said, I may have something to do later. One more thing. When we talked about not giving full pay for service, I was waiting for them to do this now. When you don't give to your church, when you don't support your pastor in the church with, with your funds, you are rendering good is evil and evil is good. Now, some people believe in tithes, and I don't believe in tithes. I believe in generous offering that you give to the Lord what the Lord has blessed you with, and you are happy to give to the Lord without grudging. That's what I believe. That's not the message. But if you don't give anything to your church, that is evil is good and good is evil. Next week we'll pick up good is evil and evil is good. Share these out. Get them out.